Welcome back to the Fantasy Madness Podcast with me, your host, the Mad Chatter, Ryan MK. Thank you once again for joining me. Much appreciated. Yes. Do not forget to follow me on the Twitters, on the Grams, at RMK Madness. And check me out on the tubes, under the Mad Chatter MK. You might be watching on the tubes, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. Well, I hope everybody's week was well. Mine's been a little stressful, a little busy. Then you add in the presidential debate, where Trump's talking specifically to Proud Boys, white supremacists, and telling them to stand by. Stand back and stand by. Like, these people are going to be patrolling the polling stations. Like, this scary shit. I don't like this. But then, we find out President Trump tests positive for COVID. A lot of stuff going on out there. A lot of thoughts. Not going to say I wish for anybody to die. Because I don't. But, if this doesn't kill him, maybe it wakes him up. It's probably a stretch. (laughs) But with people like this, what he could end up doing to America, if something does go wrong. Oh, what are you going to do? I'm going to say, dude probably should wear a mask. So I'm not going to sit here and wish death upon anybody, but I'm going to show very little sympathy, and not just for him, for really anybody in the crowd that wants to not play it safe, put other people at risk, you know, because for whatever reason, it's fake, or the masks bother you, or whatever. Got no real sympathy if you go and get sick and die, because you just should have fucking done what all the scientists and medical professionals have been saying we should do. That's all I'm saying. So I'm not going to get into politics or anything like that. You know, you know, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on that, I have my Miscellaneous Debris podcast. You can check that out, talk about all this stuff. I'm just, bottom line, this shit is stressful. We can't help but talk about it occasionally. Because there's a lot going on in this country. It's bad enough. This is the pandemic. You were worried about climate change. Like, which is a real thing. If you can't tell, California is still on fire. And no, it's not because they need to rake some leaves. Sorry. Ice caps and shit are melting. Like, there's a lot more than just... I'm not even... (laughs) I would just say that stressful times, man. 2020 is fucking insane. And the president's not helping. So if anything, this should chill him out for a couple weeks. Everybody can fucking collect their thoughts. Fuck's sake. It's nonstop with this shit. Proud boys. Anyway, we're getting on to football. If you want more of my thoughts, again, check it out on the Miscellaneous Debris Podcast. You can find that everywhere you find my stuff, which is mainly Twitters. Twitters, you can find all my stuffs, my contests. You can check it out there. So, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. We're, we're, yes, a little refresher. I'm good, I'm good. Okay. Football. It's getting a little stressful in football, too, huh? The NFL, speaking of COVID, it's got its first real test with it now, doesn't it? Titans and Steelers, game is postponed. Now, this is due to... 11 or so Titans players slash staff testing positive. And they were worried about Minnesota. But Minnesota's been cleared to practice. They've got no, excuse me, positive tests. So, what does all this mean for fantasy? Well, the Vikings and Texans will be good to go. Unfortunately, no Titans, no Steelers. So you just got to take this as a bye week. An unexpected, shitty bye week. But it it sucks. But it, hey, 
That's really all it is. If people want to bitch, whatever. There's a reason in a lot of my leagues we expanded the IR roster or IR spots so that if a team really got ravaged by COVID or injuries or something like that, that, you know, there was room. Got to take that into account. Strange year. But really, fantasy managers, you can't complain too much. It's just like a bye week. It just sucks, A, in how early it is, B, that it was unplanned, and C, all the other injuries, all the injuries that are going on, you know? But I would say, however, that this scare that we're having with this test with the COVID, it's just the beginning. I mean, I'd like to hope not. But in all reality, this is likely not the last that we'll hear from COVID-19 in the NFL. Is all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But that's all right. That's all right. We'll figure out a way to make it work. Right? Yes, yes, yes. As always, as always. Now, now, let's get into a little recap, review, you know, some of my thoughts on the Thursday night football game last night, shall we? Well, it was a game last night, that's right. And it, it, yes, and you know, I don't know if it was good, but it was better than I think a lot of people expected. A little bit high scoring, um, a lot of turnovers. Melvin Gordon had a nice fucking run, almost a 50-yard TD run. But the Broncos beat the Jets 37-28. to Jets lose again. And even though there were reports that Gase might get fired if they lose the game, it was not to be. The Jets came out and said today, yesterday, yesterday, today, <laughs> that they would not fire Adam Gase. Okay, so you, you do realize, they, it, how do they not realize He's really the major problem there. Just saying. Just saying. But what do I know? Anyway, Denver had a decent game. I mean, now Mark Ripien. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not Mark Ripien. The other Ripien. <laughs> His nephew Ripien. Brett Ripien. He, uh, three interceptions. But he had some moments, not bad, but three interceptions. Denver won anyway. See, that's what's crazy. Denver has all these fucking people on IR. They're missing all these talented players. They don't have their starting quarterback. And yet they still win. It's amazing how terrible the Jets are. Tim Patrick, hey, he had a game. Six for 113 and one did not see that coming. Jerry Judy had not bad. Only two catches, but for 61 and a touchdown. Fant, Noah Fant had a minor ankle injury. They think it's very minor and he should be okay. He had a few catches, nothing spectacular for New York. Darnold got you some points. I mean, he got 26 or so points. If you were crazy enough to start him, I did in a, a couple of super flex leagues. And then Jamison Crowder, welcome back, 7 for 104. But otherwise, very sad for the Jets. No running game. I mean, he's got Crowder. Herndon's been a huge disappointment. You figured he'd be able to rely on Herndon, but it's just not happening. It's just very, very sad. So my conclusion (laughs) for Thursday Night Football is that Denver... Might actually be fun to watch. I mean, once they get some people back and they get Drew Locke, or if he ends up, you know, fizzling out next year, they get somebody. (laughs) They get a good quarterback next year. I I mean, this team could be really, really good, I think. But there's a good chance we're going to have to wait on that till next year because of all the injuries. So it's unfortunate. But uh, Denver's kind of fun to watch. Denver's kind of fun. But as far as... QBs go. Sam Darnold, he is, he's, he's in trouble. He just keeps getting worse. He's fucked whilst under Adam Gase. That much is clear. Most players are. So, 
you know, is it this Peyton Manning connection that keeps getting Gase jobs? Because he keeps fucking up everywhere he goes. The teams, the players, etc. And now, Sam Darnold. I get the O-line sucks. And Darnold does some stupid shit. But the play calling is fucking ridiculous. That's, that's my thoughts on that, if you know what I mean. That's my thoughts on Mr. Gase. But that's what we got for Thursday Night Football. Recap. There you go, there you go. There you go. All right, now, let's get into a little bit of infirmary chatter. While not quite the bloodbath of the first few weeks, there's still definitely some injuries to discuss. Now, we do have some players returning, first of all. I know, it's fantastic. George Kittle, welcome back. We, we love you. Damien Harris, we hope to see you do some good things. Good things. Me, personally, I think you're going to take over that New England Patriot running back room. That's what I think. That's what I think. And Debo Samuel, welcome. Welcome. It's good to see you this season. Thank you. Thank you. So we got some some players returning to play. Kittle's coming back from his injury. Mr. Harris, Mr. Samuel hopping off the IR, the injured reserve. Adding to the injured reserve, though, however, is Mr. Tariq Cohen of the Bears. Tore his ACL. It's unfortunate because... Uh, he was looking decent, and I really wanted to see what he could do with Mr. Foles. But uh, now that's going to be put on the shelf. Puerto Rico Cohen. Done, done for the year. Now, doubtful coming up for week four. Only a couple of names. J.J. Arthago whiteside who, who cares? And Henry Ruggs. You know, he's got the knee, the hammy. He's not probably not going to make it this week. Which is unfortunate because I actually kind of like the spot the Raiders are in to make some noise. And they still could. I mean, Darren Waller. Hey, we'll get into that in a second. So that's what we got for Doubtful. Now out. Officially out. Dallas Goddard. It's going to be a six to eight week thing. He hurt him his ankle real, real bad. Michael Thomas, also with an ankle injury, still not going to play. Then you got Mike Williams, Chris Godwin, both with hamstrings. Poor Chris Godwin. He got back last week after having that concussion. And then, bam, injured again. It's too bad for Brady, too, really. Leonard Fournette, his teammate, Godwin's teammate, ankle injury. He's out for the week. So I guess it's Rojo time again. That's right. <laughs> I know some people got to be very excited for that. Cam Akers, out with the rib injury. Jared Cook's got a groin injury. He gone. Deshaun Jackson, he's got a hammy. I think d just might be done. Alshon Jeffrey, his teammate, got the foot injury. He's still not coming back as of yet. Jimmy G will still take a seat with the ankle injury. And, you know, that means Nick Mullins, who didn't look that bad last week. He's going to get the start. Of course. Jimmy G's running back, Raheem Mostert, he's going to be missing. So it's the Jarek McKinnon show, yeah, again, and Jeff Wilson, of course. Michael Pittman. We got a couple of rook-wide receivers that are out. We got Pittman with the calf injury. I'm dying to see more of him, and I'd like to see Denzel Mims come back at some point. Fuck's sake. Brian Edwards, also out for the Raiders. Foot and ankle injuries. So... This is going to be interesting. I think the Saints are in trouble. We're going to get into some of this stuff. We're going to get into some of this stuff in the prognosis of the week. But there's some good good tidbits in there. And questionable, questionable for week four. You got Terry McLaurin with the thigh. Scott Miller with the groin. Tampa Bay might need that Scotty Miller, so he better get his shit right. Got a couple running backs for the Seahawks. Hyde's got the knee. Carson's got the shoulder, both questionable. Looks like they're not so concerned about Hyde. We'll see about Carson. If Carson misses, Travis Homer, ding, 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 ding. A ding, 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 ding. And in the case of the Raiders, it's easy. Waller, Renfro, you know, yeah. 
All right. Kareem Hunt, also questionable. He's got a groin injury. Lots of groin injuries in this week. DeAndre Hopkins, surprise on the injury report with the ankle injury. That's unfortunate. But he looks like he might be okay. Christian Kirk, will he come back this week? He's got the uh, groin. Groin. Like I said, groin. Damn. Zach Moss, he's got a bit of a toe injury. Missed last week. Going to try and make it back this week. And then Sony Michelle with the quad. Damien Harris is coming back. Sony Michelle is beat up. It begins. And of course, Julian Edelman, once again questionable with a knee thing. And he'll probably be on there every fucking week till the end of time. Because it's Bill Belichick and it's Julian. I think he does this shit sometimes just on purpose, just to be a dick sometimes. I wonder if he does that. I mean, not that he would just. (laughs) Just like, hey, we know your knee's probably good. But we're going to go ahead and keep putting it on the questionable anyway. Anyway, there you go. That's what you got for the infirmary. Yeah, I know. It's been a blast. Damn injuries. And then the COVID stuff. It's just never ending with this. 2020 can't get any crazier. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that because it probably... What the fuck? (laughs) All right, let's get into it. The week four... Madness. My prognosis. The Cleveland Browns are in fucking trouble. They're in fucking trouble. Now, I'd like to see Baker come out and get the passing game going. They may be without Kareem Hunt. I'm sure Chubb will get a workload. But they need to get Odell and Jarvis Landry involved take advantage of a beat-up Dallas secondary. But here's the problem. Dallas is going to be mad they lost that close game in Seattle. And I guarantee you, one of Mr. Dak Prescott is going to be mighty, mighty bothered by some comments made by his boss, Jerry Jones. Now, if you didn't hear, Jerry Jones essentially said other quarterbacks would have won that game, that Dak didn't win, apparently, last week. And that's got to put some fire in him, and he's going to go tear some shit up this week. I guarantee it. Guaranteed. Kenyon Drake has got a bounce-back game coming, and what a prime spot to do it against Carolina's shit-run defense. That's perfect. That's perfect. We get round two of Nick Foles this Sunday. I'm excited. And he gets to go head-to-head in Fucking Philip Rivers in a, what should be a shootout, I imagine. Could be a shootout. I know the Bears' defense is good, but I think Philip Rivers is good. Now, here's the problem. People are going to point out there's no Paris Campbell. There's no Brian Edwards, but he still has T.Y. Hilton. He still has Jonathan Taylor, Naheen Hines. Okay, he still has Zach Pascal. And oh, 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 oh. Mo Alley Cox and Jack Doyle, for that matter. So, you can't act like he doesn't have weapons. And I'm a believer in Ashton Doolin, who you never know could make an impact on the game himself. That's one to keep an eye on. I got him in several leagues, though. I'm good. I like me some Ashton Doolin. I think I dropped him in one to pick up somebody else and watch. This would be the week Doolin explodes. It would make perfect fucking sense. Because, of course. But with Foles. Boom, Allen Robinson. Boom, Anthony Miller. I think they're going to have great games. This is going to be a fun game. I'm excited for this one. I really am. I really am. And keep your eye on Octavius Pierce as well. Because with Tariq Cohen down, it's David Montgomery and Ryan Nall. Yuck. Octavius Pierce. Another name to keep your eye on. <sighs> James Robinson. Dude's going to keep it rolling versus Cincinnati. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But I do think Burrow is going to have a really good day. I think Mixon's finally going to get some production going. And they're going to lead the Bengals to a win. That's what I think. That's what I think. But I think Jacksonville, yeah, still put some points on the board. James Robinson. 
The Ravens, I believe they're going to roll all over the Washington Foreskins. I you thought I was going to say Washington football team. I said Foreskins. The Washington Foreskins. That's right. That's right. Lamar, Andrews, they're going to bounce back. Hollywood, I expect to have a good game. Now, the running backs, that's where you get to the question mark because you don't know. Mark Ingram does not look good this year. He should be taken out. Give me Gus and JK and give it to me all day. More of them, less of Ingram. And I imagine we'll see a good chunk of the two of them this week. I do think, though, speaking of running backs, that Antonio Gibson really makes a mark this week. Because, if anything, I think he's going to get used more in the passing game because, well, let's see, they're kind of beat up. There's no Steven Sims. So they've got a questionable Terry McLaurin and, 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 and Logan Thomas, Don Charles Inman. Like, this is, what? Dwayne Haskins has, like, no weapons to throw to. So, and... Antonio Gibson, and for that matter, the aforementioned Logan Thomas, he should get, both of them should get big workloads, I would think. Next up, Kenny Galladay. Now, I want to talk about him because it's quite obvious if you watched last week how much better he makes the Lions offense, how much better the threat of him there makes Matthew Stafford. And I believe we're going to see the Lions continue to play well. So much so that I believe they upset the Saints. Now, I don't think the Lions are a great team, but I do think Drew Brees is struggling right now. And I do think he's going to continue to struggle now again without Michael Thomas. And I do think that the injuries that the Saints have on their entire team, secondary things like that, no Lattimore this week. I see Matthew Stafford going ham. And the Lions put up too many points for the Saints. That's what I that, that's what I see coming. I mean, of course, you still play Kamara. But I'm not liking what the Saints are doing right now. I'm really not. I'm sure, it'll change a little bit when they get Michael Thomas back. We'll have to see how it goes. That's right. <laughs> I would say play all the guys in the Seattle-Miami game. Because I just get, the Seattle defense isn't what it used to be. Legion of Boom is a thing of the past, long gone. Legion of what? Doom. Legion of Doom. Speaking of, did you know that Animal from Legion of Doom died this week? That's some sad shit. That's some sad shit. Legion of Doom, legendary tag team. Also known as the Road Warriors. Legendary. Legendary tag team. Love those guys. Rest in peace, Animal. Back to the football. So I do think... Because of the lack of defense in Seattle, that Miami and Mr. Fitzpatrick are going to be able to put up some points. So, of course, you like Parker. Of course, you like Gasecki. That's right. Miles Gaskin, I've got starting in a couple of leagues. And then Seattle's pretty obvious. They're just fucking rolling right now. Also, play your Rams. They play the Giants who are not a very good team as well. They also lost a close game last week that they likely should have won against the Bills, and they're going to be pissed. And they're going to take it all out on the Giants. So play your Rams. Play your Rams. Although, I do... Excuse me. I must need a nap. (laughs) Darius Slayton is someone I really like for the Giants this week. I would say Evan Engram too, but I'm tired of thinking Evan Engram is going to have a great game because he doesn't ever have a great game every once in a while. He should be awesome this week, but then again, their team is pretty bad. So, <laughs> Team is pretty bad. And I do think Another little upset pick here, the Raiders surprise, the Bills. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. The Raiders, Josh Jacobs is playing out of his mind. Derek Carr got a great connection with Waller. They still got Renfro there. So, yeah, they're missing Edwards and Ruggs, but they've got some other pieces. 
Zay Jones has actually made a few plays recently. Same with Nelson Aguilar. So they're going to be okay. The Buffalo defense. Now they got to travel on the road. It hasn't been the Buffalo defense. It's been, they've kind of struggled. Now they're coming to Las Vegas. You got Allen, who's been tearing it up. But I got a bad feeling for him for this game. Because he still does a lot of the things. You know what I mean? He just tends to get by with his raw talent. But there's way too many times in that game last week that he should have lost the ball in a fumble or it should have been picked. He's too turnover prone. And I think that's going to come to bite him this week because the Raiders got a pretty solid D. And it's a game on the road. Eh, I think Buffalo's going to have some trouble with this one. The Raiders are going to take it. Ah, yes. And, you know, here's some things that I'm looking forward to. The Battle of the Defeateds, as I've been calling it. That's the Minnesota-Houston game. Both 0-3, excuse me, both in the playoffs last year. Expectations for this year, and they're both 0-3. Now, 0-3 is not great. Your chances of making the playoffs are very low. But they're pretty much non-existent. You get to 0-4. So one of these teams is going to have just the slightest bit of hope. The slightest bit of light. They can see it. And they're going to see it. And they're going to try and go for it. And the other team is fucked. And I do believe it's going to be an interesting game. I do think we'll see some points scored. And we will we see Deshaun Watson really ball out. And really get going. They showed some improvement last week. They're going to have to show even more this week. And when it comes to Minnesota, well, you know what happens if J.J. Watt and them boys start getting some pressure on Kirk Cousins, he's in trouble. But if he can manage to get the ball out on occasion, could prove for a decent day for Thielen and maybe even Justin Jefferson again. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to that game. See if Justin Jefferson can torch some more defenders. I also want to see the beat-up Bucks versus the new-look Bolts. I want to see a little more of that Justin Herbert experience. Is he going to continue to go, you know, Eckler and Allen? Because when it was Tyrod, it, was a lot, it felt like it was more Josh Kelly and Mike Williams. But with Herbert, since Herbert's been in, Keenan Allen's gone up a little bit. And so is Eckler. So, does that continue? We're going to see more rounded out. We'll see. And then Brady, he's going to have to keep going without Chris Godwin again. We still got that Mike Evans. And whether Scotty Miller sits or not, Justin Watson could be one to look at as one who could make plays, maybe in a DFS play as well, because, hey, he's a talented dude, right? This just isn't the offense it was last year. So, maybe Mike Evans goes ham and nobody else really has time. But, Miller, Watson, either one of those guys could have a big day. Either one. Now, here's something I'm not looking forward to. Sunday Night Football. (laughs) The Eagles and the Niners. I'll watch it. I'm sure it'll be decent. It'll probably be better, much better than I expect. But these two teams are beat to shit. San Francisco's another team like Denver that's just depleted. Nick Mullins is kind of, you know, helping the offense out. They're getting Debo Samuel back. And then Philadelphia just feels like they're on a crash course. They've got no fucking wide receivers. Carson Wentz doesn't look the same. Miles Sanders is constantly beat up. Like, they're in trouble. They lost Dallas Goddard. Which can only mean Ertz is going to smoke it. But we got to see. I mean, because Nick Mullins could potentially outplay Carson Wentz. And then where the fuck are you at, Philly? So I find this to be an interesting game. I do think we'll get some action, some fantasy points. I do like me some Greg Ward in this game from the Eagles, just so you know. And of course, McCain and Miles say, yeah. Back to what I do want to see. 
the Patriots and the Chiefs. This is going to be a good game. This is going to be a good game. I'm telling you, Bills are going to be ready. Temper those expectations for your Chiefs. No! Yes. You suck. No! Yeah, jackass. Yeah, uh, yes. No! No! <laughs> that turned into a mess. <laughs> but seriously, temper the expectations. Now there's a good chance Mahomes and them boys, they's fine. But you know, Bill is a mastermind, and he's going to really work hard on trying to limit what Mahomes can do. I wouldn't expect any less, to be honest. And keep your eyes on Damian Harris, because he is playing Sunday. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Damian Harris, don't forget, I said it. And if you keep an eye out on playerprofiler.com, I'll have a Damien Harris article coming out too, along with my infirmary, the official injury report of the playerprofiler.com, of the Roto Underworld. Yeah, yeah, by me. So check my Twitters for all that stuff. Yes, yes. <sighs> Week four. Gotta love it. Game over, man. It's game over. That's right. It's a good time to end the pod. We got week four coming up. It's going to be a blast. I'm excited. Really, it was kind of, I really am, was impressed with the Broncos last night. I'm, I'm excited to see. See, this is one of the reasons I like watching as much of the games and different shit as possible because sometimes you, there are some fun teams to just watch. Like Denver, I've kind of enjoyed what they've done so far this season. It's just unfortunate because they can't do everything they want to do and they can't be what they should be because of the injuries. And the injuries, ooh. You know, it's going to be a tricky year and we talked about it. We talked about it during the off season. I've wrote about it, and we're now we're in the midst of it. We're in the thick of it now. And you got injuries galore. You got COVID shit happening, and it's not going to be the last we're going to see any of this shit. But we can continue to work together, stick together, fight through, find ways to get through. And you know what? We're all going to be all right because we're going to find a way to push through and make it to the end. <sighs> championship we are the champion because even if you went the modified zero rb sometimes called anchor rb if you, even if you went that in a lot of drafts like i did and you're dealing with some injured backs and you're struggling a little with depth there's plenty of names out there and as i've said if the as the injuries continue to go spots will open up same thing is going to happen with COVID. Like, it's going to be very interesting to see how the rest of the year plays out. We're not quite a quarter of the way through. And it's been insane so far. So, again, we do what we do and find our way through, right? I don't know what it is. Why, uh, why am I rhyming? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? So, once again, thank you. For joining me. Much appreciated. I do appreciate anyone out there who follows me, supports me, listens to what I got to say. It is much appreciated. Never forget it either. Never. Keep your eyes out on the Twitters for my infirmary article that I mentioned that's coming out today. So keep your eyes out for that. Otherwise, just, you know, try and enjoy yourself this weekend. It's been a stressful week. I mean, yes, for me, but we've all been stressed for weeks upon weeks now. <laughs> Some better than others. You know, but we're getting through. Again, we're getting through. And we'll continue to get through together. So, as always, much love to you all. Do not forget, stay safe, stay vigilant, stay mad. Because, really... As I've said many a times before, all the best people are. <laughs> right? 
Anyway, anyway, anyway. Everyone, thank you again. Enjoy your weekends. Have fun watching the football. Good luck in the fantasy stuffs. And we will chat again Monday. That's right, Monday. Haha. Ta ta for now. Laters. Welcome to the